Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a Thursday episode of Ted's Brew Cellar, the premier alcohol review show here on YouTube with me, your most gracious host, Ted. Uh, I'm looking a bit weary in the eyes, but that's just because I've been working awfully hard at work uh, this week, so I might look a bit haggard, um, and I also haven't really uh, cut my beard properly in a, a little while either, so that does need to be seen to very promptly. But on to the show for today. Now, um, as many of you who pay any attention to football will know, uh, France recently just beat um, uh, England in the quarterfinals, and then what was it? Yeah, and then it was Morocco in the semi-finals to set up a very mouth-watering final of the World Cup against Argentina. Uh, now, I've got a very dear friend of mine, Imogen, who you guys will obviously have seen a couple of times on Ted's Boo Cellar, um, and I thought I'd review a French drink to commemorate that. Uh, now, my brother and his wife, they recently went to France, and they brought me Maxima French beers, so I'm going to review one of those today. Um, Imogen uh, gets a bit triggered when I uh, mispronounce French things, so I'll try my best to... Um, to either pronounce it as cl closely as I can to actual French, or I might just run some of it through Google Translate. There is a bit of a blurb on the back of the bottle uh, of today's drink that I did run through Google Translate. It didn't quite get it right, as far as I can tell, so I'm going to try my best, so bear with me on that. But uh, today we're going to be taking a look at uh, Bière Blonde uh, Chimé, or Chim. Uh, it's spelt, um, beer is spelt B-I-E-R-E, -E, which I'm, obviously is the French word for beer, Blonde, which is like white or blank, or I guess uh, you could say it. And then Chime is, uh, I, I really don't know how to pronounce that. Chim, Chim, I don't know. But um, that's basically the French word for crown as far as I'm aware. I believe this says um, blonde beer crown or beer blonde crown or crown is the name of the beer itself. So, um, yeah, hopefully it is as... Uh, forgot what I was going to say. Anyway, um, let's just hope it's generally decent. And to be fair, most French beers I've had in the past have been actually pretty damn excellent. The French do know their alcohol and food, so um, that's why I ran the blurb or through Google Translate. So I'm going to try my best to read that. Um, I'm going to try and le read it in French first. <laughs> so again, apologies if this is a garbled mess. Uh, Le Mont du Birogue, uh, Le Chime, Bien Le, <laughs> le Chime, it's a rough, 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 santé, la, la se vu, and poor passes, nos, uh, soutrance de cereales, avec un amour to me, discreet, et les savoir, ravir les amateurs de bien douce et subtile, uh, sa robe, doui et sa, uh, finemou. Uh, Finiron Pavu, Erchanter, Accompanare, Avec Le Grec, Vos Moments, Aperitif, Mapu, Egalement, Se Maria, Avec Le Pas de Volaire, Blanche, Et du Chacouterie de Montagne. Uh, so, I've definitely completely butchered that. And I ran it through Google Translate, so, it didn't, so I'm not sure if this is quite an accurate translation. But it says, the word of the beerologist, uh, the crown, light and refreshing beer. Let yourself be carried away by its surprising notes of cereals with a discreet bitterness. It will delight lovers of sweet and subtle beers. Its golden dress and fine foam will accompany, will, sorry, will eventually enchant you. Accompany with lightness your aperitif moments, but can also be married with dishes of white poultry and mountain cold cuts. So I'm almost 100% sure that Google Translate doesn't know what it's talking about, or I've just entered it in wrong. So, again, apologies. Um, I will say, though, the design of the bottle and the label is lovely. It's a classic sort of French alpine countryside um, silhouette there. Very handsome, very simple. I'll give it a solid uh, 9 out of 10. I just... Uh, I, was, I was hoping there would be a bit more colour contrast on the label here, but it's definitely one of the more handsome looking drinks we've had in a while. Now, I'm going to get a glass actually, because I think considering this is a quite a nice looking beer, I think that's unfair. fair. So of course, <clears throat> what with it being a uh, French beer, I'm going to put the beer in a, uh, my Stella Artois uh, glass. Putting a French beer in the glass designed for a Belgian beer. 
that's going to go over well. Anyway, uh, let's have a quick snifter of it first and see what our first impressions are like. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that smells like a proper French beer, that. Almost, weirdly enough, it, it's got like this underlying um, smell of like a Franco Belgic um, sort of like blonde beer. But then it's got this through line of sort of like almost what smells like kind of like Alpine cherry wine. Like it's such a unique flavour. Like cherry wine, uh, smoky oakness, a um, little bit of like blonde, um, you know, Celtic beer. It's such a weird mix of flavours and styles in that nose that it's, it's really quite something. Um, I'm going to pour it out into the glass so we can get a look at the what it actually looks like. There we are. Quite gold. Just looks like a nice Eurocentric lager by the looks of it, at least. Mm. And when it's in the glass, though, that's much more of like a wheaty blonde beer smell with like a bit of like a, a really strong honeyish aftertaste. There's... Still a little bit of an overtone of oakiness, but generally that is really nice. That smells lovely. I'll give the nose of that a 10 out of 10. That is, ooh, that smells delicious. But um, anyway, pour the rest out into the glass. Oh, overdid the head a little bit there, as you can see. But still, that looks pretty good. Mmm, smells lovely. Anyway, we'll have ourselves a quick palate cleanser of water before we see what this sucker tastes like. And then, on to the most important part of the video, which is to see what this sucker tastes like. So, to everyone at home, bottoms up and live, um, uh, oh yeah, um, vive la France. Oh, that is good. That is damn good. I was going to say as well, um, this is 5.2% alcohol volume. It says on the back here, uh, serve at four to six degrees Celsius, which I think is about right. Mm. Mm. So it's kind of got like the texture. It's weird. It's I kind of like got the texture of like something in like the cross between like a a, a summer gallop and like a Cronenberg. Like it's got like the light crispiness of something like a Cronenberg. And then a sort of weird heaviness to like the texture as you dr as the um liquid goes down towards the end of like something like a uh, San Miguel, something that's a little bit heavier and fuller. Um I mean that's the texture, it's like light and crisp and then sort of like gets quite full bodied at the end. Um whereas, you know, some drinks you'd expect them to be full bodied throughout. The flavour is uh, just like very simple, sort of like wheat, like white blonde beer kind of flavour. There is that oakiness again, but it's like very subdued. It's very subtle. It's not too overpowering. It doesn't clash too much with the other flavours. The end is kind of like slightly honeyish, uh, a little bit floral, kind of like almost. Um, A little bit like white mountain flower ish, dandelion ish, kind of. It's a mixture of like all sorts of different sort of um, European beer flavors that you see in a lot of like continental European lagers and blonde beers that are all combined together to what I would say makes one of the most smoothest uh, drinking experiences that I've had in quite some time. Um, generally speaking, I would thoroughly recommend this for first time European beer drinkers. Um, this is a pretty good entry point, although it's probably not quite what you'd expect when you go into something like, uh, like say, a German beer or like a Belgian uh, white beer or something like that. So do take that with a grain of salt. But, pardon me. But generally speaking, in terms of like clear, crisp U European continental like lager style beers like this, this is definitely one of the better ones you can have, um, and it's really, really solid stuff. Um, it combines a bunch of different flavour styles that I really like in, t in a way that doesn't cl clash too much with each other. So I think you would, you know, anyone who's looking to get into beers for the first time, particularly like continental clear crisp lager style beers for the first time, will definitely enjoy this. So, um, let's see. Let's say...
Honestly, I will say 10 out of 10. This is genuinely one of the best lagers I've ever had. Right up there, honestly, with uh, Asahi, Mythos, and a couple of others that I've failed to mention. Um, I remember there was a craft one from a brewery in Sussex I tried a couple of years ago that was a banger. But yeah, no, solid stuff. 10 out of 10 all round. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty solid. Like a good like 9 out of 10 for the label, 10 out of 10 for the nose, and 10 out of 10 for the smell, uh, taste. So to my brother and his wife, thank you very much. I've got a couple of bottles of these that I'm going to chug my way through. Um, and uh, to my friend Imogen, uh, congratulations on reaching the World Cup final. And sorry for butchering all those French words earlier. But to everyone at home, I hope you've had a good uh, evening and a good week. I hope you have a good weekend ahead as well. And if you like this video, leave a like, share and subscribe. If you have any suggestions for future episodes of Ted's Boo Cellar, let me know in the comments section down below. And if you want to check out my other social medias, I'll leave them in the video description down below. But until next time, have fun, stay safe with whatever you're doing, don't do anything I wouldn't do, wash your hands, take a mask with you to the shops, drink responsibly, know your limits, and I'll see you guys at the bar next time on Ted's Boo Cellar. Bye-bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.